Hi Floss Tube, it's Karen, Recovering Monogamous Stitcher, and I'm back today with Floss Tube video number 42. Today is Friday, April 12, 2024. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you are a, a returning viewer, you're so welcome. I'm happy to have you back, especially if you're a subscriber. And if you've been a watcher and not subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. I hope you see something you enjoy. Um, I think there's something in every um, floss tube video for some stitcher. Everyone has their style, and there are so many videos out there. Um, it's, it's great that everybody can see what they want to see. And I really appreciate your time. It seems like every day there are a couple new floss tubers popping up on my feed, and I, and I just can't keep up. Um, you know, they're all the favorites. You don't want to miss any any episodes of your favorites, and then new people come along and go, oh gosh, they're wonderful too, and I just, there's just not enough time. So for those of you who've chosen to spend some time with me, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, you're, you're special to me. I wish we could all stitch in person, that would be great fun. Uh, another reminder before I start my video, remember stitchysasanak.etsy.com offers a 20% discount to my viewers on, um, on her, her Etsy site. Uh, and she does wonderful quality bags, and um, I know you won't be disappointed if you decide to order from her. So take advantage of that discount. And I have that in the notes below with the code. Okay, let's jump right into it. Start off looking at my book of days. Um, and, and some people have commented um, that they use a regular calendar. Absolutely, you can use a regular calendar. Whatever you dedicate to keep track of your stitching works. I just like this. I like the theme and I, I have fun with it. So here's my book of days. I'm not much on stickers because they're pretty big and they, the ones I have anyway just take up too much room. Um, so on my list, these are my goals for the month. The only thing I have uh, checked off is my focus piece. I stitched seven days already this month on my focus piece, which at this time happens to be Mason Jar lineup. And uh, returning viewers know that I, and new, for new viewers, I'll repeat it, I um, require of myself to stitch seven days each month on my oldest whip because that's what bothers me, having something old that I've not touched. So I focus on my oldest whip um, and I require myself to stitch seven days on it and it remains my focus until it is done. And that has just been a really successful system for me. If it's something you think you're interested in, give it a try. If you're not a planner, forget it. Don't do it. You stitch what you love any old time you want. Um, I had one day with no stitching. I had um, a Zoom with my StitchCon friends. That was great fun. I had another Zoom with um, <clears throat> Queen City Sampler Guild, and it was on Scottish samplers. It was like a, a class. Uh, it was wonderful. Uh, Sissy Bailey Smith taught it, and it was about identifying Scottish samplers. And we had great handouts. Um, I don't think I'm giving anything away <clears throat> flashing this. There were some things that you look for when you're looking for a Scottish sampler. Now, do I think that I could go out and identify a Scottish sampler? No, but it was very interesting, and I enjoyed the class very much. Uh, and that came with, you know, your Queen City um, Sampler Guild <clears throat> membership. I, let's see, I also, oh, I could have done another Zoom with Queen City Sampler Guild, but we had an HOA meeting, so I couldn't be two places at once. So I missed that one. But there are many opportunities for Zooms, and I, I enjoy those too. I had no finishes so far this month, but I did work on some whips. So let's get into that. The first whip I worked on, I, and you saw this at the end of uh, last video. This was the last whip I pulled out. Little red chair sampler from the Scarlet House. That's been out a while. That's not a newbie. And I got quite a bit more done on it. Uh, last time I, I had an outline of the rose. I had the leaves done. I had a little bit of the um, border done. So I went back to the border, filled in some more motifs. And I had been so proud that, oh my goodness, my border matched up. Well, I've discovered a mistake. It was right at this corner. Apparently I can't count to four. Um, and I put five. 
so I discovered it and I thought, oh, will I go, will I not go? And I did some more leaves, but I stopped. I'm not going to, I'm going to go back. I know where the mistake is. I'm gonna take it out, make it better, <laughs> fix it and keep going. And I suspect I probably have um, another mistake someplace that made that made it all match up. And so one mistake complemented the other <laughs> or compensated for the other, uh, but I'm gonna fix it. So little red cheer sampler from the Scarlet House. So cute. And I told you about um, someone at StitchCon showed me hers on 56 count using silks. Oh, so gorgeous, so gorgeous. Anyway, uh, then I all, that was the first thing I stitched on. That finished out my month of March. And then I got to April, and so I went to my focus piece because I wanted to do it first. I, I don't make myself do seven days in a row and always the first seven days. It's whatever I want. Um, they can be disconnected. I don't care, but I, I want seven days every month because I want to continue making progress. So this is my current whip. It's called Mason Jar Lineup. It's a dimensions kit. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It's stitched on 14 count Ada, and I'm using their the threads that they included. Um, and it is just gorgeous. I forgot to tell you on the um, little red cheer sampler that stitched, I'm stitching that on 40 count Meadow Rue from Lakeside. And I'm using all the called for weeks dye works, except I'm switching, I'm putting in DMC 310 instead of Weeks Dye Works Coal. To me, the black is black, so. Okay, so, Dimensions Kit. And I told you last time that I had ordered the PDF. I got the PDF successfully, got it on my, um, my iPad, and it's in my Good Notes, and I'm able to use it. The thing that, there is still a thing in that um, the two pages that come together, it's like a page and a half of pattern and then each side has the list of symbols and, and what they are. So so you have this, a page and a half this way and a page and a half that way. Where they come together, it's still two separate PDFs, but it is PDF. So when you're in the page, you can expand and mark on it and cross out what you've done and so forth. Uh, so when I came to making that connection, I, I taped my working copies together so I could make sure I lined up. And then I had to refer to my working copy as I just made that connection across that um, page gap. And, and it worked, it worked. And then I'm back to using the PDF, so that's great. And I'm putting in the notes below, if you have a dimensions kit and you want to know if they have a PDF and they will send you the PDF, I'm putting the information in the notes below so you can, you can ask for that too. And it really makes a difference. It really does. So here's here's the side that I started. I think, no, I started here. I think you saw this. And then I did this part. And, and the, oh, the back stitch. And now I've come over to these two jars. They overlap, so that's easy to work on as one. Let me see what I'm, what I'm showing you now. And I've not done back stitching yet. So you can see the difference how with the back stitching, it's very defined. Without, it kind of looks like a watercolor, which is still gorgeous. And yes, I just left my two threads there because I'm working my way up here and there are different colored leaves and I'm just managing the two threads so, so I don't have to keep putting it down. So that is Mason Jar lineup so far. Oh, <laughs> this. Okay, when I came down this time, and since our house is for sale, I'm not bringing anything extra, and I brought nothing extra for stitching. I brought my my whip basket with my current whips, and I stuck in some other things that I had kitted, thinking those, okay, as I finish things, I can pick those up. Um, so then I'm working on Ann Borat. You've seen that. I didn't bring it to show you, but you you know, that's the one with all the specialty stitches, and if it's done right, it's reversible and so forth. I had nothing to practice on, and I did not want to practice on my good fabric that I'm finishing. So I practiced um, the Montenegrin diagonal up and down, up and down there. And actually, practicing that on Ada was helpful. But I'll take that out, but anyway, that's what that goofy thing is, so. There you go. That's what happens when you don't plan ahead well enough, thoroughly enough. Okay, and then I wanted to start on red, and um, I 
decided to keep her for the pins. Now these are not all entirely red. In fact, the two I started with are red, except there are, there's a little bit of green on the top of a tomato. Those are the, those are the two. But this is Brenda Gervais with my needle and thread to keep her for the pins. I think there are six or seven, maybe six, maybe six little pillows, sewing themed, tomato themed, sewing themed, very fun. So I got two of them done. You know what I discovered? These plastic placemats, they work just as well as a board. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm doing because I didn't bring any boards either. Okay, so I got two of them done. Uh, my sole is fed with needle and thread and then the ABCs with the little tomato pin cushion. And I do have beads at home. Little beads are to be sewn at the top of those pins that are sticking in the tomato pin cushions. I have beads so I can do that when I'm home. Everything is like when I'm home, it's all there. When I'm home, I can do it. So um, this was about a day and a couple hours or something. A day's stitching, you know. It's however much time I have in a day. And so I was done, but it was early and I, I could have gone on, but I didn't want to do the other ones in the book because the other ones have colors, for one thing, so I don't want to count that as stitching on red. Um, and I hadn't planned ahead for the colors, so I don't have the colors anyway. So, okay, so I went back to my basket and I had also brought, and I showed this to you, Little Robin Designs, Peaceful Kingdom. When the queen is happy, there is peace in the kingdom. Or there is, yeah, there's peace in the kingdom. And I plan to stitch that with DMC 115, which is DMC's variegated red. But, and here's the 40 count I stuck in my bag for that. It's not big enough. It's not wide enough. I measured, I did my stitchy math. It leaves about an inch on each side. And even if I sew fabric, strips, which I'm not against doing that. I'm happy to just sew fabric strips on. It's just so close. I was afraid there wouldn't be enough for the margin and it wouldn't, it would show in the frame. So, and I'm not going to put my time into it to have a possible disappointing ending. When I know I have 40 count fabric at home that I can use. I don't know why I grabbed this piece. I think I probably looked at it and thought, yep, that'll fit and didn't even count it and measure it. So, so, okay, I put that aside and went back to my, um, my whips. And this one caught my eye. I haven't touched this one for a while. It's from Hands Across the Sea, Margaret Doyle. This was a, an exclusive um, for Shakespeare's Peddler, who was also a kitten stitcher. Um, and it's a beautiful little sampler. So I went back to it, picked that one up and spent two days on that. Now, before, let's see, I should hold something behind it because the light's shining through. Okay, I had started in this corner. I had done some of the border. I had half of this flower, leaf, leaf, none of the blue, and none of this. So, um, a couple days I did that much border and finished out the flowers. And the, the colors are really beautiful. Uh, can you see the blue? The blue isn't really showing, but the reds are just gorgeous. They jump out. It's all DMCs. Of course, you know, I could have done silks or over dyes. No. They have uh, Soie 103 or Soie d'Alger and DMC. They didn't um, recommend over dyes. So. so that's what I'm doing, all DMC. It's beautiful. So that's what I've worked on in the last couple weeks. Um, and I am in the dead zone. Uh, so haul, there's virtually nothing um, because I don't want things getting into mail forwarding and being kind of bounced around and bounced around till it finally finds its way home. Um, but I did take advantage of um, I, the Hands Across the Sea, the Wow Box, the Words of Wisdom Box I had purchased and there were some discount coupons in there, and um, I used Nicola's discount coupon for from Hands Across the Sea. And I did PDFs, so they're not lost in the mail now. Let me see if I can show you the pictures on my iPad. Okay. First one, well, it doesn't matter, first, second. 
you've seen this. This is not new. Margaret Beatty. I thought that would be a great companion to the Margaret Doyle because this one is a little girl and a rabbit and the Margaret Doyle is a little boy. I think he's reading a book or something. So that's that one. And the other one I ordered is relatively new, M. Nenquin. And these are, oh, oh, come on. At the bottom, those are different uh, designs of darning stitches. So I'm looking forward to that. And of course, uh, you know, if my budget was unlimited, I would have gotten many, many more, but these are the two that jumped out and spoke to me, so, so that's what I'm starting with. Okay, so this is gonna be a, um, a record short video. Uh, that's all the stitching I have to show you. Uh, my plans moving forward are to um, complete my time on Red Sampler. So when I get back, I have many choices. Uh, I have Anna Oman um, with me here. I have the pattern, but I don't have any, the fabric or the thread, and I have it at home. So I can do that, or I have, I have a couple JBW books of samplers, red samplers, um, and other, I have many choices. So when I get back home, I'll pick one out and that'll be the next red sampler and I'll, I'll fill out that time. I'm going to uh, get back to the forget-me-not box, um, get the initials on that. Um, and it's people in the, uh, okay, I had commented that I had planned to put my mother on the very front and me on the back and then grandmother one side and great, great, great on the other side. And then I mumbled something about, or maybe I should do it in order. And people on the comments said, do it in order. And that makes sense. So I'm going to do that. So I've not done the initials yet on Forget Me Not, but that's the next step on that. Um, and then I'm going to get back to Ann Borat. Um, that needs some thinking time. <laughs> <laughs> not interrupted time. I need to really think about that. I showed you the, the flower that I need to take out because it was. I know there's mistakes in it and it's messy. So I'm gonna go back, get that out, start with that again, um, and get going on and bore it again. So that's my plans for the rest of the month. I am gonna miss some stitching days though because we'll be going back mm -hmm. to Kentucky next week. So my next floss tube will be in Kentucky. Um, I will miss a day of stitching our packing up day, I'll miss a day our driving day, and I'll probably miss a day the next day unpacking and recovering from the long drive. Um, so my stitching time will be short coming ahead a little bit, um, but the good news is I will have a quilt to show. Uh, I haven't run out yet and um, looking forward to doing that. So I will see, you. I'm not going to keep you because there are many other floss tubes you need to get to. So. Go ahead and move along, and I'll see you in two weeks. Thanks so much, Stitchers. Bye-bye.